I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I take a look at my life and realize there's nothing left. Cause I've been blasting and laughing so long that even my mama thinks that Thank you very much for joining us today. Uh, this is video nine, The Simple Fraud. Um, I will show um, a series of letters that just explain something that this particular offshore island police had great difficulty uh, understanding. So this is a letter from Lewis and Dick. That was my family's lawyer uh, many years ago. You can see here they're talking about a reorganization of basically um, families companies here so you've got company a and company b so company a was the original company that my grandparents had set up and uh, the trustee sets up another company um, to collect the rents on the uk properties on the next page here you can see it's a letter from the gloucester district land registry uh, explaining that um, Company B is an intercompany of Company um, A. So in other words, uh, Company A owns com Company B. This is all in relation to the land where the shopping centre was built. On the next page you can see here again, um, Company B has been uh, incorporated at a certain address uh, in, uh, in one of these offshore islands eventually from the from the UK side um, so this is a letter uh, that the lawyer of the time had traced certain companies to see exactly where it was incorporated and a certain name change um, so historical letters just backing up the information that I've got on the next page you can see here what happened is the lovely trustee instead of getting uh, the tenants in the UK to pay to company A uh, they they instructed a certain individual uh, to act on behalf of the creditor and collect rents from the UK tenants. Uh, instead of getting them to pay to Company A, uh, they've instructed them to pay to Company B. So that's where the money was going from the UK properties. On the next page you can see here um, one of the tenants uh, was Dunlop and owed my family £37,500 in unpaid rents. So the individual who was instructed by the family's trustee to collect the rents have written to the tenants asking them to pay, but not to Company A, to Company B. On the next page here, you'll see um, that this is a bank statement from my grandfather's records. Uh, it shows that particular client paying into Company A, not paying to Company B. So on the next page, you can see the amounts of money that were involved. This particular company had £2,291,000 in cash, let alone all the property it owns. On the next page here, this is an email from the lawyers that were representing or are still representing my retired trustee. They, they say, uh, basically at the end of the letter here, um, that the, the fraud I had read in the newspaper, there was a theft of £5.5 .5 million in 2015 in one of these offshore islands. So that's why I originally started looking into my family's affairs when I saw that article on Google. Um, the lady uh, in question who is representing the trustee and, and used to work with the trustee states at the bottom, bottom, finally in our conversation on the 23rd of January 2020, you made allegations connected to an online BBC news article uh, dated the 14th of December 2015 in respect of the of the conviction of a former employee of blah 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 following an investigation in 2014 i can confirm that after careful investigations involving all relevant authorities and professional forensic accountants as a member of this not said firm i am satisfied that the estates were not affected by that incident so remember what she's um, told my family before i started really looking into matters that I shouldn't worry, that, that theft had nothing to do with my family's affairs. Now on the next page you can see here, these are shareholders of um, Company B. So Company B has four main shareholders, uh, and since my visit to this uh, particular offshore island, I've been uh, tracing all of the shareholders of these companies. 
the convicted fraudster of this um, offshore island actually dissolves all the shareholders of Company B, as you can see on the next page as well, and on the next page. So he is removed from all four shareholders of Company B, uh, and the person who actually removes him is the lady that sent me that email saying she could rest assured that the estate was not affected by this individual. So that's complete lies and fraud. Uh, you can see on the next page again this individual is removed. Uh, from his position as a director uh, of the shareholders of Company B. Uh, and again, he's just removed from absolutely everything. Uh, the FSA, remember, of that said island, um, of the said island, said that Company B was not affected by this individual. Uh, they did four reviews and still held that view. The police of this uh, particular island took over a year uh, to actually get the case properly opened. I've just spoken to them today and hopefully they're going to take some action. Right, on this last page here is um, a letter from the land registry uh, from a certain area um, to my family explaining that we've, we have withdrawn the caution on the registered land that we did on 28th of June 1990. Now the reason my father uh, removes the caution on the land, he's promised his inheritance from these individuals, uh, from the trustee and, and the other companies. We never get our inheritance. Um, I've got my teeth into this case. This is just a small part that I can show the public at the moment. Uh, any press out there, anyone wants to test the documents, do uh, email me. Clearly the documents don't lie. Uh, please bear in mind my family only received £200,000 in 30 years from this individual in this offshore island. Uh, Company A in 1988 was worth £5 million on its own. Thanks a lot for listening. Bye-bye.